What's going on everybody? My name is Adam and as always, welcome to the channel. Today I am excited because a project I have been following for months just dropped a couple of days ago and that is Bjorn the Cyber Viking. So what is Bjorn? According to the author, Bjorn is a powerful network scanning and offensive security tool for the Raspberry Pi. It discovers network targets, identifies open ports, exposed services, and potential vulnerabilities. Bjorn can perform brute force attacks, file stealing, hose zombification, and supports custom attack scripts. Now, this video is not designed to be a comprehensive tutorial or a comprehensive guide. This video is designed to get you to this point where it's at least up and running. Now, if you built a Ponagachi in the past, you most likely already have the hardware necessary to do this project. This is a WaveShare version 4 e-ink display and a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W with a standard 32 gig SD card. Now, if you haven't built a Ponagachi in the past, I will link all the hardware and software in the description box below. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and wipe everything out and we're going to start from scratch. All right, let's jump over to Windows here. If you haven't done so already, make sure you have the Raspberry Pi Imager, link in the description box below, scroll down the page and select the appropriate one for your operating system. I've gone ahead and plugged in my SD card and I'm going to choose device. I'm going to select Raspberry Pi 02W. Choose the operating system. I'm going to come down here and look for Raspberry Pi OS Other. I'm going to select Raspberry Pi OS Lite 64-bit. This has no desktop environment. Now the author and their prerequisites stated they used a 32-bit. You can choose whichever one you prefer. I'm going to go with this for testing. I'm going to choose storage. That's going to be the SD card. Select next. Would you like to apply OS customization settings? I'm going to click edit settings. And there are a few key things we need to make sure are set. The host name should be set to bjorn.local. The username and password should be set to bjorn. And I'm going to set the password to bjorn just because I'm lazy. Configure the wireless LAN should be set. This is going to be the name of your wireless router on the SSID. And then you want to select and then you want to set the password you use to connect to your wireless router. The other important thing to make sure is set is the wireless LAN country. This needs to be set to the country you reside in. Different countries use different channels and frequencies for wireless. The EU uses a different frequency than the US and vice versa. So make sure this is set appropriately. We'll come over here to services, enable SSH. This is important for connecting to our device later and use password authentication. We'll go ahead and click save. Would you like to apply these customization settings? We're going to click yes. Are you sure you want to continue? We'll click yes. You can go ahead and X this out if it pops up and it should begin writing. Okay, now that the image is done writing, we'll go ahead and click continue and we can go ahead and close this out. Let's go ahead and install our SD card back into our device. And an easy way to find the SD card slot is all you need to do is look for the ribbon on the display and you'll find the SD card slot right underneath of that. And we'll go ahead and apply our power source right to the outermost port. Now, this will take a couple of minutes to load and you will not see anything on the display because we have not set it up yet. So go get you a cup of coffee, some tea, or whatever your drink of choice is, and we'll come back in about two or three minutes. All right, let's switch over to Windows and we're going to open a command prompt. So we'll type CMD or Charlie Michael David. And what we wanna do is SSH. And if you followed along, it should be Bjorn at Bjorn dot local and if this is connected properly we should get a fingerprint request there we go this key is not known by any other name are you sure you want to continue connecting we're going to type yes now it's permanently added and it wants the password reset up i set mine up to be bjorn all right we have connection to our raspberry pi now 
thankfully the author was kind enough to provide a quick installation script. And if I actually read the hierarchy, it's right there. If you want to do this manually, there is a comprehensive guide below. I don't want to do that manually, so I'm going to do it with the script. So let's see if I can type this right the first time. We'll do wget https And I typed something wrong. Let's try that again. wget https. I think I typed too fast. GitHub user content.com. Oh, okay. I see what I was missing. I was missing the Bjorn the name, the tail in there. All right, if I ls, I can see that I have installed.bjorn.sh. We need to give that executable command, so we'll do sudo chmod plus x install, hit tab to autocomplete. And then we will do sudo period forward slash ins tab enter. So I'm gonna assume this is the first time you've set this up. So we're gonna call this a full installation. I'm gonna hit one. This gives us a selection of screens. I have version four. I'm going to hit four. This is a compatibility check. We can see that it is detecting low RAM. It says 512 is required. I have 416 apparently. Everything else is showing green. You have the warning above and then success. I see a lot of green, I don't see any red, so I'm gonna continue as successful. So this is going to take some time. The install script pretty much runs automatically all the way into the end, and then we will need to reboot the device. I'm going to let this run in full. I will speed the video up, and then I will try to look at the timestamp to see roughly how long it took to do this, and we'll return once it's ready for reboot. All right, it should have come up to would you like to reboot now, which it looks like it did, and I must have hit, hit enter or something. So when this, when you do see would you like to reboot, go ahead and reboot and hit Y for yes. I'm going to do sudo reboot now just to force it to reboot. There we go. And if we look at our device, we should see it pop up shortly. And as we can see, our little cyber Viking is alive. The next thing we'll need to do is get the IP address of the device so we can interact with it on the web interface. The easiest way to do that is to come back over into our command prompt. We're gonna SSH back into the device. So it's SSH Bjorn at bjorn.local. The password you set earlier. I'm gonna make some space and I'm gonna type if config. What I'm looking for specifically is WLAN zero, and then I'm looking for the IP address just right of INET. And we can see my IP address for this device is 192.168.68.155. I'm gonna take this IP address information, come over to Firefox or whatever browser you're using, place that in the address bar, and make sure port 8000 is following it. And we can see that we have an interactive web UI. This allows us to restore defaults, change custom settings, and more. Now again, this project is an alpha release. This is not a comprehensive tutorial, nor is this a comprehensive guide. This is to help you get to this point. The rest of the testing is up to you. I will link the author's Reddit page below. And beyond that, happy testing. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And until then, I'll see you in the next one.